I'm Don Dixon and I want to thank you for joining me for another uh, edition of our structure fishing workshop. Today I wanted to share with you just a short little video. It revolves around a few recent fishing trips. It was not necessarily a fishing trip. It was three separate days I spent on the water over just over the last few weeks. And that's going to lead me to a, what I'm going to talk to you about today for a little bit, but more importantly, it's what's going to lead us into our next area of study, which is uh, I'm simply going to refer to it as on the water training. What do I do when I get on the water? Everything I do for all species, all times of the year, what techniques do I need to follow? Uh, do I cast? Do I troll? Do I do both? All of those kinds of things. We're going to go over it and I'm going to demonstrate exactly how I go about my fishing. But before we get into that, the next time we meet, we're going to start that. Our on the water training. We're going to pretty much stay with that the rest of the season. But I also had this thought, which I wanted to share with you today. And that is the last three little days of fishing that I did brought up something that I think is real important for you to know. Then I'm just going to tell you the story and then show you a couple of pictures and we'll, we'll move on from there. But it wasn't too long ago. I took my youngest son uh, down to a lake south of here that I hadn't fished. Literally, I had not fished in some 32 years. Now, at one time, uh, when I originally fished this lake, I caught quite a few fish and quite a few big fish. It, it, it was a good fishing hole, no doubt about it. But I had two spots on that lake. Remember, we're talking about being in the right place. I had two spots that outperformed all of the rest of the lake put together. And I was curious, uh, and I told my uh, two sons, I said, I'm curious to find out how that lake's doing and get down and check out these areas that I worked back in the day, some 32 or 34 years earlier. They agreed to go. Well, as it turned out, it was a washed out day. Bright, clear sky it was not a good fishing day and we were not doing very well. But all of a sudden, we got a few clouds moved in, changed, there was definitely a light change. And sure enough, those fish became active. Uh, not for very long, for about, maybe for about 25 minutes or so. And we start catching fish in the exact spots. Actually, I threw a marker on a spot that was a finger, a one-sided bar on a brake line. It was an exact spot where I had caught a bunch of big fish back in the day. I had just one marker out. The rest of my work I was doing following my, my depth sounder. But at any rate, we got this cloud cover, kind of start catching fish. You can tell there was a little activity period, and bang, youngest son hits this fish. Okay, when he comes here, he's got to do something, so let, just let him, don't worry about it. Nice fish. <laughs> it's terrific fish. I think it was about eight and three quarters, something like that. Now, it was a nice fish and all of that, but it's not about just catching that fish. It's about, I was sort of taken aback by the fact that it was 34 years ago, last time I fished that lake. Now, not only in the same area were we catching fish, but the exact same spot where I'd caught a bunch of big fish in the past. Bang, 34 years later. Same spot, I had a marker on it. <laughs> now, I kind of smiled about that, laughed about it. Now, I'm really not surprised about it. But when I tell other people that, hadn't fished there in 34 years ago, back is exactly the same as it was 34 years ago. You see, this is going to be, I'm leading to a point where I want you to know, fish don't change. Fish hasn't changed since the beginning of time. They do the same things. They react the same way. Nothing changes with the fish. Now, we've had a tremendous change in tech, technology, uh, the graphs and things that people are using today. Nothing, you know, look like a TV screen. 
they do every GPS, you know, it, it, it'll change, do everything but change your name for you. Well, back in the old days, we didn't have that kind of stuff. In fact, I don't have it today. I still use my old stuff. I still use a simple meter. You've all seen it. And I still think it's the best thing in the world for actually catching fish. But my point is, there's been a lot of changes in, in rods and in reels, a lot of advances in technology in our sport. Uh, I can now go on my computer, as you know, press a button and pull up uh, a contour map of any lake in the country, any lake of significance in the country. It's so at my fingertips. Well, that was unheard of back when I started. And when I started was 47 years ago, when I first started working for Buck. Long time ago. Seen a lot of changes. But the fish haven't changed, my friend. Now, let me take you to the next thing, which was just a couple of weeks ago. There's another lake, which is a little bit north of here, uh, where I had a sort of a go-to spot. It was one of the typical Florida-type things. There was a slot of water. It was about 17 feet deep. And there were a couple of brake lines, minute brake lines, to that slot where I could always count on catching fish. But because I spent all my summers, once I started doing the on water school, spent all my summers up in, in the Winnipeg area, Winnipeg River, and the chain of lakes up there, uh, teaching those schools all summer long, I didn't do a lot of fishing in Florida. And by the time I came home, uh, most of the time I was looking to have a couple of days rest, you know, because fishing the way we do, it's not easy. It's not for sissies. It wears you out. <laughs> but at any rate, it produces. Uh, so... But at any rate, I had fished this spot, and I said to my son, I said, you know, just for fun, let's go fish this little, little old lake that I was talking about. Not all that little, about 9,000, 10,000 acres, something like that. I said, let's go fish this lake. I want to go to the, my spot on that lake that I used to have. And I looked back on it, and it was like 42 years ago was the last time I fished that spot. 42 years. So I went out there and I expected to see my uh, 16 or 17 feet of water in the slide. It wasn't there. But there was 14 feet, which is deep enough. And my little brake lines that were on that structure 42 years ago, they're still there. And I started working these brake lines to the slot. And it was first thing in the morning. We were there pretty early. Certainly out there by the uh, time the sun came up. And... We started catching fish right away. And when we started our first pass, I said to my son, I said, you know, there's two little fingers that stick out right here. I have a shoreline sighting, which was still available to me. And I looked and I said, it's right about here. And sure enough, where it turned, I threw a marker. And by the time we finished that pass, we hadn't caught a fish. But when we reversed the pass, by the time we were approaching that marker, I said, now in the old days, I said, I could count on it. I could almost tell you, knowing about how far your lure is behind the boat, that you're going to catch a fish pretty much when your lure gets right here. And then we went for another five or six seconds, and I said, it should be right about now. Bang! Folks, I'm not kidding you. And if you watch it, we have a little video of it. I don't know if it'll come out or not because it, the motor was making a lot of noise. Yeah, right where we said he was going to be. That's a good fish. That's a good fish right there. finger. Well, he felt good there. He's now he's kind of well, he's coming at you. Coming sure. out. That was a good. That was a good fish. That's an adult fish right there. Yeah. I think he's trying to come up a little bit. We might get a jump at the boat. Oh yeah, a good fish. Good fish. Looks like a two, three fish. pounder, four pounder maybe. Oh yeah, that's that's bigger than I thought. How big is? It? Oh yep. I don't know. I think I maybe brought up a little too much line there. Look that. Good fish. That might be a four or five pounder. I don't know. All right. I'm going to bring him to you. I'll let him sleep. 
coming at you. Oh yeah, nice fish, very nice fish. Right Pretty where good. she was supposed to be. Isn't that something? I wish I could just tell people. I don't know if that was on camera or not. I said, see, that's a nice finger right there. That's where it should be, and pow. You definitely called that. Right there, I know we were bumping really good. This 200 was hitting the bottom hard right there, and right up on that finger. Great fish. Here, like lines right here. Man, so the first good fish of the day. And we're not surprised because he was right where he was supposed to be. 200. That's that brass 200, man. Nice job. The thing is killing it. It's like, <laughs> uh, if we could just take every one of my subscribers fishing and say, you know, like in the old days when I take the raiders and that, I'd say, you should catch one right about there. And I'd throw my finger in the water for effect, you know. What I was doing was pointing to a finger, a change in direction where the fish should be. And many times, just like that, there he is, mm -hmm. like he's supposed to be. So we're not surprised. It's called it right away. We'll shoot a picture and then we'll put her back. Well, right. we waited four and a half pounds. Nice fish. Bear. Woo! That'll work. Let's get another one. Now, to me, the funny part of this, I hadn't fished there in 42 years. Now this slot, it, it only runs for a couple hundred yards, maybe, maybe 300 yards at the most. That's it, not a very big area. And it wasn't that we caught fish on that same break line 42 years later. I mean, we caught it on the same spot where I could call the actual anticipated strike. I want you to think about this now. 42 years later. I'm fishing exactly the same way I fished 42 years ago. Even with all the technology changes and all of that stuff, I'm not doing anything different than I did 42 years ago. And go out there and catch fish. Now, wasn't a great weather condition either. Let me, let me state that right off the bat. But we fished that till about 11.30, and it got so hot. It was, I think the heat index was about 113, something like that. We left the water. We called it a, we called it a day after a morning of fishing. And we had caught 20 bass. Never left that spot. 42 years later. Now, I'm not really surprised, but you might be. I want to bring this up. You go ahead and map your lake, the lake you live on, or the one that you fish regularly, you get a good map of that, and it, it puts you in the right place. And if you're there at the right time and you're fishing in the right manner, which we were, you're going to catch fish. It's that simple. And not just a couple fish. We caught 20 bass. Now, this story even gets better. The very, not the next day, I'm sorry. Two days after my son and I had that experience, and my wife was with us, by the way, but once we had that experience, he decided that he was going to take his wife. He had a, a day free. She had a day free. Uh, they're both educators. Uh, so they decided to go back to that same spot that he and I had fished the, the day before. So they went, went back to that spot and went to fishing. I didn't even know they were out there, but I got a text message about mid-morning, maybe not even, about 9.30, something like that. And it was my son sending me a text, and he said, we're out that spot we fished the other day. And he said, we haven't hit quite as many fish today. We've only caught 11. <laughs> you know, for most bass fishermen, that's a pretty good day, 11 bass, you know. But it's 9.30, he's only caught 11. He's looking at that as it's sort of a disappointing report he's given me. Well, we've only caught 11. He said, but my wife caught pretty good in the last pass. And here, I'll share the picture with you. Nine pounds. Fishing the same stuff I fished 42 years ago. Can I let her go? Yep. Yeah. 
folks. The fish don't change. When Buck said back in 19, whatever it was, 1945, here's the facts concerning a fish. He had it all right. And I didn't run into him till 1970. He had already been out there shaking the bushes for, for some nearly 30 years. And then I ran into him. He was in his late 50s. I was 28. And I started my fishing. My fishing changed instantly. I started catching more fish than everybody I knew combined on a regular basis. And I really didn't know all that much. But I was so confident because of our first meeting and the success I was having catching fish that I continued to study. And the next thing you know, I'm working for him for 25 years or 30, whatever the heck it was. But at any rate, uh, my point of all this is the fish haven't changed. The gear has changed. The promotional stuff about tournament fishing and all that, that's all new. That wasn't around years ago. There's a lot of new stuff going on, but the fish have not changed. Everything Buck discovered about the fish has not changed. And he had it 100% right. There is nothing he ever told me that I could disprove. There is no, there is no such thing as him being wrong about something. He was right about everything he said. Some people choose not to, not to uh, identify with it, not to uh, talk about it, because they're too busy trying to build a name for themselves. Like they come up with something new, or you know, they got the new hottest lure, whatever it is. But the truth is, Buck has already said it, my friends. And everything he's taught us is true. And the proof is always, it used, to, it used to be a little funny thing I used to try to say to people sometimes when I'd get a naysayer or something. I'd say, listen, my friend, the proof's in the live well. Talk's cheap. I come from that neighborhood. You know, I come from an area of little Italy. Talk is cheap. The proof's in the live well. You either got the goods or you don't. You can talk all you want. You can chirp all you want. But the truth is in the live well. And before I met Buck Perry, I couldn't catch a fish out of the lake to save my butt. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> Since that time, it's just been stupid good. And uh, my whole point of this little video today is letting you know the fish have not changed. I'll give you one more. A couple of months ago, two of my friends came down from from uh, uh, one from Ohio, one from Nebraska, come down and do a little fishing. Old time students and good friends. We went fishing, but we thought it'd be fun to go fish a lake that I hadn't fished in literally 35 or 37 years. Couldn't remember exactly. And I said, there's a good break line that runs for quite a distance, probably a mile, mile and a half. I said, let's check that out. Here's a few pictures. There's the results. And literally haven't been there for 37 years because it's a couple hour drive for me. Fish have not changed. But all this catching that we're doing, and by the way, my oldest son's wife, her experience is about, you know, she's been fishing maybe six, seven times. Now she got a nine pounder to her credit. It's because my son is doing the right things. He's in the right place at the right time, fishing in the right manner. Now, this fishing in the right manner, that's a whole study. We're going to spend, I told you, the rest of our year, pretty much. I might interject something here along the way, here or there, but basically we're going to be doing on-the-water training. Exactly how I fish. Casting and trolling. And I relate it all to all species. Keep in mind, our study fish is a, is a largemouth. Buck's study fish was a largemouth. Main reason he chose a largemouth, it's universal fish. It's found almost everywhere. And it's the hardest fish to catch consistently. Everything else becomes pretty easy. But I'm going to talk about fishing for walleye. I'm going to talk about fishing for northern and musky and some techniques and so on and so forth. And I want to tell you before we, before I leave you today and get started on that on the water stuff, is that successful fishing isn't really all that hard. 
the hardest part is getting through some of this classroom stuff because to most people who aren't really serious, it gets too boring for them. It's like people going to school that really didn't want to learn. They just went to school because they had to. But to people that, that, that really wanted to learn, the people that ended up achieving in school, it was because they had an interest. They had a desire to learn. Well, if you have a desire to learn in fishing, you're probably watching my videos. But there's millions of fishermen aren't watching my videos. They'd rather go out and see if they couldn't buy that new little secret lure, that new success that they can buy in a fancy package. They don't want to put in the study time. But if you put in the study time, still in the end, in order to put the fish in the boat, we got to be out there doing what Buck referred to as fishing in the right manner. And there is a right way and there is a wrong way. Now I'm going to spend the rest of this season basically talking about all of the above. So with all that being said, I'll show you some of the pictures of, of these three spots I went and fished that I hadn't fished in over 30 years, all of them, one over 40 years, hadn't fished. The fish are still there. And we're just knocking the tar out. I'm doing the same thing we did 40 years ago. Keep in mind, and I'll end with this. I got a picture. Let me share this with you. From a young man from Texas who had his eight-year-old son out fishing. Maybe some of you saw it. I put it on Instagram. And they were trolling a brake line to a saddle. And up until uh, he started uh, following our videos, he didn't know what a saddle was. And he didn't catch this fish that's on the picture. His son, who was eight years old, caught this fish. Eight point, whatever it is, 8.53 pounds. Trolling the saddle. That's the reason I'm doing these videos. That's the reason I'm going to do the on the water work. I want to get you catching fish. Someone just asked me last week, they said, man, what are you getting out of all this? I know it must be a lot of work doing all this. Well, it's not really work to me. It's what I do. It's what I like to talk about, catching fish. But it's a lot of work for my wife <laughs> to edit everything I do. And it's time consuming. And I want to share this with you. So far, in about 14 months, we've been doing this. 14 or 15 months. We've earned $28. <laughs> A tank of gas. <laughs> That's it. I didn't get in to do this for the money. Back in the day, I made my money. We had a successful corporation back in the day. But I'm not doing these videos for the money. If I was, <laughs> I'd like to amortize that out. Twenty-eight dollars at fourteen months. That's definitely below the minimum wage, <laughs> and then some. But getting that picture. Of that young boy, eight years old, with that eight and a half pound bass. And the look on his face. Yeah. That's the reason I'm doing this. And I know I have a lot of beginning fishermen or, or beginning structure fishermen that are quite a bit older than him. That still, this is brand new to them. And I'm telling you, if you take the time, become a little bit studious and and learn all of that classroom, go back and review some of those videos and get that classroom education. So when we're out on the water, everything I'm talking about and everything I'm doing will make sense to you. And keep in mind, my goal in this whole deal is to get you catching more and bigger fish that you can share it with your children and they can share it with their children and so on and so forth long after I'm gone. That's the whole idea. That's why we're doing it. And I want to publicly thank my wife because her passion is her music and, and, and what she does. My passion is this. But she's taken hours and hours and hours every week to help produce what in fact is my passion. Now she loves to go fishing and catch fish, but it's an awful lot of work for her. So I hope you're really getting something out of it. I know many are. I get in a lot of kind comments and we're going to continue this, but I, I want you to bear with me a little bit on this on the water training because we've been getting an awful lot of rain. 
a lot of lightning, a lot of stuff going on. So it's not always real easy to, to go out there and get what I really want to get. And I can only use the water that I have here. I cannot uh, find that three-mile dam on a flatland two reservoir here in Florida. It doesn't exist. But we're going to do a lot of study out there on the water on technique, both trolling and casting. So I'm looking forward to getting started with that the next time we meet. So thanks for joining me today. appreciate you being here. And I want you to like us on Facebook if you would. Be sure to follow us on Instagram where you would have seen the picture of this young man from Texas. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot of stuff planned. A lot of things have been going on and there's a couple of new announcements I'm going to make coming up too. I want you to be around for So join us next time we get together. I appreciate you being here today and we'll see you the next time.